What's going on, man? It's your big brother, K. Reno. And again, y'all are tuned in to another rendition of K. Reno Radio, the YouTube edition, man. And as always, man, I'm honored to have these brothers with me. We have been working together um, for a while now. You know, we've been putting in some work, different ver different forms of work, anything hip hop oriented, whether it be shows, music, whatever. And, and I'm, I'm happy to have these brothers on here because they represent in my opinion, some of the hardest working cats in the game that are trying to establish and build up a brand and establish something that's going to be long lasting. We got the off the chain family in the building with us, man. I got my brother Sin Lope, he's here, man. Got my brother Vic in the building. And of course, I got my family, Bub G is in. We waiting on Fatzilla to show up as well. This is the off the chain family, straight out of Corpus Christi, man. Y'all, let, let, let us know, man, how y'all fit in today. How y'all brothers fit in today, man? Y'all can take it off mute. Oh, it's a blessing, oh. bro. Very humble blessing to be able to be on this podcast. <laughs> a real platform. And, like, it's an honor. Because you are living not just a Houston, but a Texas period of the mutual period. And, oh, you know, be able to be great. Bless you with our, you know, be blessed by your presence. Man, nah, man. I'm, thank, to I'm thankful to y'all, man, for, for coming on. Um, we want to really get into the history of y'all as individuals and as a label because, and and, and we want to talk about Corpus Christi in general. So all of y'all are, are from Corpus, uh, somewhere around. Yes, Corpus. Okay, so yes, Corpus Christi, you know, we we know, um, we, we know, we know Mr. Mike. Mr. Blank is that brother who, who laid that foundation in Corpus Christi. And I know y'all are work, very familiar with Mr. Mike and work with him quite frequently, man. Yes, Tell us boy, how y'all started out as, as a label. I'll get into the individuals. How did the Off the Chain Records label get started? And how did that whole thing get built up? Any one of y'all can go. You got that, Sam? I ain't gonna lie, man. I, I started rapping in high school with my cousin Mo. Because, like, you know, we were skipping class and stuff like that. And he used to make beats because he was in TYC and shit. And he got out making beats with pens and stuff and freestyle. And he started telling me to freestyle with him. And, you know, we grew up on the screw tapes and stuff like that and listening to the freestyles. But I didn't, I didn't know nothing about being able to rap, nothing like that. And he used to stay on the niggas. Love, I would stay on my line about it, you know, and just do it, just do it. And we kept doing it. You know, you know, we always, and we, you know, we family. We it's not just music with us. We came up from the dirt together. Yeah. So, Bub's mom was my mom, and so you know, I lost my mom in 1999. So, you know, Bubba's mom was my mom, like real talk. And so, like, <laughs> and, uh, which, you know, God bless. Shout out to Bay. I love you. And 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 uh, just you know, we, we it's it's really a family thing. It's more than just music with us, and that's what we've seen. With, the with most of the Texas scene, with the Houston scene, it was just SUC family, you know, you know SPC family, Switcher House family, it was families, you know, regardless of size or whatever. And, you know, we kind of emulate what we see out of Houston as our big brother. You know, how, how, you know, long, how long has Off the Chain Records been in, in existence? And when did, it, when did, when did y'all start it up? I was incarcerated when I started. Hmm. That's what yeah, Vic. We, I mean, uh, <laughs> I I mean you know, see, I, I always, I've been, I've been doing music since I was in the fourth grade, you know, seeing and everybody else. I'm, I'm the little brother of the crew, you know, and so I draw inspiration from all of them. You take a little bit from here, a little bit from there and kind of mold yourself into, you know, what, what you, what you become. But as far as off the chain as a label, I want to say about about 15 years ago, I might have been 19, 20 years old. I'm 35, 36 now. So I was about 16 years ago. We really kind of put our feet down and, you know, kind of started really recording and kind of taking it serious. I know Sin said that he was locked up, you know what I mean? And, and he was out of state for a long time. You know, I, I think I remember back in, I think, 98, you know, they was house parties. You know, I was 13, 12, 13 years old and they was they was rocking house parties at that time, you know. Uh, I believe, uh, I believe at that time y'all were what, uh, 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 underground, what was it, uh, outlaws? Outlaws, like we outlaws, talking about the outlaws, something like that. Oh, we was, we was freestyling in, in, in the cafeteria at lunchtime. Me and Mo, we, we got so overzealous with it. We started leaving class early or just not going to class and going to lunch, eating 
before people got there. So when lunch started, he started beating and we started rapping. And it was every it was everyday thing in the courtyard of middle high school, like every day. And like, you know, we like I said, we try to do what we see H Town do. We were just doing it our own way. We were trying to slow none of us or chop it up. We were just doing what we do, but it was an everyday thing. So we Vic, really so, so tell, tell me, tell me your role in it, Vic. Well, you know, explain, well, explain to the people, you know, where you where you fit in this mix, brother, in your history. Hey, I'm 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 the older brother, and this, these are my brothers, man. I, I've been in the music game since um I don't know if you're familiar with Happy Alone Records. Yeah. We had a uh, Kareem, we had a uh, we had, yeah, uh, had Nick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We I had Nick with us. Yeah. yeah, so we we've been I've been in the music for 20 plus years, wow. and um just like they're explaining about uh Sin saying you know uh the the mom and dad being our our parents, they 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 blessed me and they brought me into their family and. And God works in mysterious ways, and He puts everybody in their place for a reason. Yeah. And from then on, you know, we we put OTK on our backs and said we're going to carry this shit forward, you know. But I've been doing this for a long time with uh, Gangsta Nip and Happy Long Records. Shout out to Skag Nady, Sammy G, you know, and AOZ, all them guys over there. Yeah. You know, we we've been doing it for a minute. But uh, I'm the big brother of them, and we we, we um, I'm the glue to these guys here. Okay. So you you more behind the scenes. You more behind the scenes on the on the business the business aspect of the game. Taking yes, care sir. Side of it. yeah. And and now now that's what I want y'all to talk about next because in building a label, man, when you're building a label, you have to have individuals who play certain roles. You got artists. You got executives. You got people in promotion. You got people who answer the phones. Whatever the the, the role is, you have to have. How how did y'all's chemistry develop to say well you know what. We know what we're gonna do as a collective, and we know the roles that we all want to play, and we accept that. Because I'm sure that even though there are roles that have to be played, when you're first starting out, all of y'all have had to do a little bit of everything at some point. Yeah. So explain that Absolutely. dynamic to me, and and, and how y'all got y'all chemistry together. Anyone, anyone of y'all. Well, I think you touched on that, Kate. You know, when you first start out, you don't know what roles you're gonna play. You're just playing a role, filling in the filling in the spots. And I think it's up to us to kind of see what we're strong at, you know, and kind of, hey, you you kind of take that role, take on. I think it just kind of does it itself. You know, you 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 find out what you're good at, and you you take up on that where you own it. You know what I mean? I think for the past 10, 11 years, Sam got locked up again, and I you know I clearly remember, you know, not wanting to do music again, you know, and hey, you know, since my big brother, you know, I I started rapping because of Sam. You know, I started doing it. I'm inspired because of what, how him and Mo used to kind of do their thing. You know, I grew up in the hood with them. So I've all, I've always had some admiration for them. And so I emulate a little bit of style from them. Like I told you earlier, we do take a little bit of this, take a little bit of that. Yeah, but everybody just kind of plays their own role. They just fall into it. I don't think somebody's getting appointed, yeah. you know, and I kind of don't want to have it like that, If in my opinion, because I just, it, it becomes... It doesn't become fun at all, you know, but you got to learn, you got to find yourself and everybody got to find an individual role. Yes, exactly. Like I, I came in as a, a engineer in the beginning known as Travis Jackson. I still do the mixing and, and producing as well whenever I'm needed. But my part where I fell in is that, you know what, I'm going to uh, handle the, the business aspect of this and, and make sure that my artists and my guys are, are happy. Oh, good. Okay. Let's get uh, somebody get, get Fazilla the link. Make sure one of y'all get him the link if y'all can, or somebody can get it to him. We want to get him. Okay, I'm, I'm going to back out right fast. I'm going to send it to him. Lope, uh, send Lope, my brother, man. Now, hey. you have been in the game how long? How long have you been spitting in it? You've been, you've been in Corpus, you've been in Corpus uh, all your life? Or? Well, free. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> well, where I you from? Where like... you, where'd you, where'd you, where you originally from? I'm from Corpus Christi. Yes, sir. Okay, born right, raised. Okay. You born yes. and raised. All right. Yes. It's just like, like I said, after I lost my mother in 99, I, I, I got in a, in a real dark place and I got back to records. A position presented itself for me to leave Corpus and leave Texas because where I was going, I was either headed to the cemetery or the prison. Not knowing I still went to prison, but I went to Arkansas with the girl I was with. My mother's fiance had work with the man named Mr. Whitmore. And, and, you know, I've always worked, you know what I'm saying? Regardless of hustling or whatnot, I've had jobs since I was 15 years old. But I mean, you know, I mean, because I, I, I take care of myself. 
And so I was down there, you know what I'm saying? I got an assault charge and, and it, was, it was crazy. I went to jury trial and everything. They still sent me to prison. First first time ever in trouble in the state of Arkansas, straight to prison. They gave me a five year sentence. I ended up doing six on it because I did a year in the county. They didn't give me jail credit for it. And when I uh, when I was incarcerated and I, and I, I got my GED incarcerated, I wasn't just all the way acting up, you know what I'm saying? I was young, I was 20, you know, 21. And like, every time I went to parole, they gave me a year denial because when you go for parole, if there's a victim involved, they got to notify the victim. I guess his defense was stronger than my offense and, and I had no support system in Arkansas to get out of, uh, in the state of Arkansas, you know what I'm saying? And then too, they just don't like people from Texas, straight up. They, the judge, <laughs> James Marcheski said it, he said they don't like people from Texas. The guards say it. It was it was clear. And so like most of, yeah, most of my time, but well, anytime I've been out of state, basically it was was incarcerated. You had and you had I, you had to give up. You had to give a little time up. Explain to me, either one of y'all, explain to me how the the early rap scene in Corpus Christi was because, like I say, Corpus Christi has a rich history. I know. I, I've, I've been knowing artists. I've been doing shows in Corpus Christi forever. How did that scene, were y'all around when the scene first developed and what established that, that, who are some of the artists we might not know about? Tell us about the early days of Corpus. I'm the early early days of Corpus. Tell them, tell them about Creon. Hey, well, yeah. when I, when, where I was growing up, I, you know, I'm 36, so the early 90s, what I what I was from the hood, I grew up in, there was Northside Bomb Squad, you know, shout out to Cool, shout out to Daddy Cree. Um, we're from the same neighborhood, you know, Cool's an OG from the neighborhood, and I just remember playing basketball with him. My best friend lived next door to him, and that's how I, that's how I grew into the culture. You know, I remember after the basketball games, they would sit and they would rap after the basketball games, and this was 90s rap, so they was really kicking raps, you know? And I'm just, I'm listening to, so shout out to Cool, shout out to the whole Northside Bomb Squad. Um, that's what I grew up knowing. You know, I, I believe so, uh, they talked about Happy Alone. I know Happy Alone was on there that time. Um, that's that's who I know, but I know mm -hmm. Sin and, and Vic can probably elaborate on some of the earlier OGs that were in the game. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yes, sir. Yeah. We, we um, early in the days, we had um, uh, Johnny Moog. He used to have the, uh, he was with Third Coast with us in Happy Alone Records. And uh, there were some of the OGs out of the North Side as well. We had uh, DJ Heavy Hands, Lobo. You know, then we had a, a producing company with us called um, uh, Tall Ass Midgets. One of the guys now is known as DJ Dusty, a real popular uh, DJ in Corpus Christi for the Tejano scene. He does his reggaeton stuff and we, we, we've been pushing in the music industry for a real long time where it was mainly in the early, late well, eight, late 80s, you know, we had a real big rock and roll scene. We were real close in ties with the uh, Austin scene with the forest music as it goes. Then we took the shift over to the hip hop scene when Happy Long Records and all these other local um, uh, studios started jumping out. And, and we had a lot of raw talent that was really, really good. And they're still out here today involved in a lot of, um, these other local artists out here in different labels, you know, everybody that's old school still doing their job, still love music, because you know when the music's in you, man, you can't get it out of you. That's right. I'm going to be honest it's, with you. Forever, man. Go ahead. I'm going to be honest with you. Like, if you ask about who was some of the first ones that we heard, other than Mr. Mike, I mean, like, real talk, like, it would have yeah, come from music Mike. culture, period, in Corpus Christi, Texas, it's Selena and Mr. Mike. Right. Music, period. I mean, everything else falls under the umbrella. But as far as rap in Corpus Christi, Texas, back then, you had the Happy Alone records, the 361 records, but you had In My Room records, which consists of Willie Nichols, yeah. Jay Styles, uh, 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 John Wynn Bush. You had you had uh, Big Face Clip with uh, Paper Chase, Edo, Rest of Love, Gianni. You had me. You had Mo. You had Drank Nitty, which he's blocked up. Yeah. You had Drew down. I mean, those we were some of the original rappers. I'm I'm 41. You know, I was. Oh, we got rapper. Zilla on here. Zilla, on, um, unmute yourself, brother. Yeah, and and see, and let me say this because I'm glad that y'all break because every city has a history. Every city has 
a, a, a rich history and artists that we know and artists that we don't know. So I appreciate y'all paying that homage to a lot of the artists who who laid that groundwork. We want to get my brother Fatzilla up in this thing, man, and um, hey. introduce Yo, what's yourself, good? Sir. Introduce yourself, sir, and um, <laughs> tell us about you know how you came to be connected with with these brothers here at Off the Chain Records, man. Well, it's your boy Fatzilla, man. You already know what it is. Uh, really on the cool shit, me and Bub G, we've been knowing each other since I was a little kid. Before I went Solid. to prison, I ended up going to prison. Uh, when I got back out, we, we were always in contact, though, because he's like a family more than anything to me. And as soon as I got out, Sin started, Sin was around before me, but I never oh, met Sin. Podcast. Oh, we do music. Okay. And then... uh. Hit that mute for me, y'all. Big, that nigga's been around for a minute too. He he was around when my dad was around. When my dad was alive, rest in peace. But when he was alive, he used to chill with my dad. So I know Big, he's 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 up there. You know, he's been me, around, well, so so that means that you are uh, you you the you the young you the baby in in, in the click, huh? Yeah. So, let me ask y'all: Is it anybody that's Missing from this set right here, or, or this is this is the foundation right here. Do y'all have other artists under the umbrella that we're not seeing right now? Yes, sir. We well, do. This is this is this is pretty much what you see is the main artist. You know what I mean? Off the chain is really is a family. Yes, we are a label now, but we're a family. The name came about from my brother QD out of Austin. You know, we just what are we gonna call ourselves? We were just acting crazy with it, and and my brother said we're gonna call it off the chain with a K. You know, and so we ran with it. And, it, you know, shout out, shout out to my brother Juice and shout out to QD. Um, that's how the name came about. You know, it's, 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 it's more than rap. It's, it's a family case. You know what I mean? Yeah. What, pro what projects have y'all put out, if any? And if not, what do y'all have coming? What do y'all have coming out? I have my solo album, Soldier You Neglected, coming out. Fatzilla and I have a Fatzilla and King Kong album coming out. Pressure. Yes. yes, yes. We just dropped a video to it in my city, which was most of it was filmed live at this night of the show that we just had, October 30th at Richard's Billy's. And, 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 you know, the video's got nice reviews, nice response. We just played on Z95 last night for the first time. And it's, it's a blessing, because I ain't gonna lie to you, Kay. When I got out of prison this last time, I wasn't gonna mess with music no more at all, because I just, I, it's a lot of reasons, you know what I'm saying? But, and when I got out, but was pressing me to listen to what they had on uh, SoundCloud. SoundCloud. And like, because when I, before I got locked up, people were using Cubase. And it, maybe it's where I was recording or whatnot, not knocking nobody, but it didn't sound like what I hear everybody else's music sound like. And I'm like, man, I wouldn't enthuse with it no more. I'm like, if it's not going to sound right, it's wasting time. You know, I'm, I'm grown now. You know what I'm saying? I got to make sure I'm able to provide for self. But when I heard the sound, I'm like, man, it, it, it sounds good. We might actually, you know, we got some, like for real. Like <laughs> we don't, we don't rap like other people rap. Not knocking nobody, not hating on nobody. It's not no big eyes, no little use. It's just like we, 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 we. It's not trying to keep up with the trend. We just rap our life. This is our diary. This is our what we live, and we've actually been able to touch a few people with it. Like before I got locked up, K. Okay, there was a, a, a young boy that committed suicide and fly blow. And his mom had reached out to me and asked me would I make a song about, the, uh, cause he was bullied, he was cyber bullied. And I didn't know what to write because like, I mean, I've never been bullied. I remember, I told you about this, you know what I'm saying? I never, I never went through that before, but like, I wanted to do it because I had did one for my little brother that passed away, Dan Stafford, you know, this week, lost his life, plant, you know, one, one in the chamber, did, he didn't know it. And so I guess the, the video was called Homies Don't Last, and I was still on YouTube. And the lady seen the video or whatever, and, and she asked me to make the song. I, ne I never made it. He messed me up about that too, though. And which is part of the reason why we're trying to set something up because talk to the kids in these schools about bullying. You know, Fazil and I, Bub G, Vic, we're trying to put something together. We love to work with SPC. Maybe we could do it for H Town and Corpus Chris to talk to the kids in these schools. And, because and this is how we make an impact. The only way to make an impact is by doing something that benefits not only us, but the people, right. the community. Sure. Yeah. Yes, sir. 
we we actually um we have those projects coming out and we're also going to be releasing um two studio compilations from a lot of uh artists that we recorded over our time too as well but back to the subject of um the the children man you know not to get too off man but my son got into a fight the other day at school and I had a real good talk with the principals man and they're going to be inviting me back to help build a program so we can uh, get to these troubled children you know and yeah. and that's, that's, you know, that's if it's our music that's going to reach out to them we're going to reach out to them with our music that's huge man I, because that's one of the in my opinion one of the responsibilities that we have as artists and definitely that we have as a collective man because a lot of the things that we went through we have an opportunity to speak on it in a way to reach them that right. could possibly prevent them from going through some of the yes, same sir. stuff so you know, I commend y'all, you know, for, for taking that mantle because a lot of people don't do it. A lot of people are so focused on money that they'll make the kind of songs that will lead our youth down the wrong roads instead of making songs that's going to flip that switch and, and transform their life. We got the Off the Chain family up in this thing, man, on K-Reno Radio. Hey. I want to ask y'all hey. another question because yes, sir. The aspect of what y'all seem to be very, very good at is um, like so promoting and putting together <laughs> events. And, um, you know, I've been a part of a couple of y'all events now, but but I could tell even when I was just coming in that this wasn't y'all first ro rodeo. So what sparked the idea to say, well, man, you know, we record label and all that, but let's start doing some show. Let's start booking some artists and doing that. What put that in y'all's mind? Go ahead, hey, bud. Well, I know, I know what it was. What put it in our mind is because we started seeing the how easy it is to do it by yourself, yourself instead of having people do it for you. We started to see why can't we do that if they're doing it? Like we shouldn't, we shouldn't have to go pay them to be on their show. We should act, we should start paying our own people and us and doing it for ourselves. And we're gonna get back to the city. We're gonna make money together. Everybody's happy. We don't have to deal with them. You know, that's how it happened. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It happened exactly like that. And, and one of the main things is for us is that we wanna teach and preach out to all the other local artists that are out there trying to get through. And this is that you gotta invest in yourselves. And investing in ourselves is one of the process of having to throw our own shows instead of depending on somebody else to put us on. So, you know, we're, we're trying to uh, build a lane and, and, and create this for other ones to follow and, and eat from this too. Beautiful. Now speak about, because what you just said was a great point What both of y'all said, speak about overcoming the fear factor that's involved in that. Because you know, people say scared money don't make money. And a lot of people don't want to take those risks because they worried about, well, what if it don't turn out? The way we lose this money. Speak about overcoming that fear well, of, of I mean, well, come, coming from the the um the life we live, uh we we take <laughs> risks already. <laughs> so we did. Good, that's a good point. You know, scary money don't make money. <laughs> nah, sure, but where he's getting at, like it's it's more to it than just the life we live. The the way we did it was the chance. It wasn't even a chance. It was an understanding we had with each other True. that we knew whether we lost or won. At the end of the day, we did it together as a team. Real tough. We Amen. Made a yes. Decision together, we didn't make that de decision individually. Right. Like, and that was that's the biggest thing. Like, the fear don't have nothing to do with it because we knew the the outcome could go wrong than what we think. Right. And like we in our head, we're thinking more like either way, we're doing what we're supposed to do. Yeah. We're doing it right. how off the chain supposed to do it. Yeah. A1, and same thing. We're doing it together, you know. I Go think ahead, I think to elaborate on that is that we also not only just putting these shows together, but if you look at what we've done before the shows, we've we've made it that we've made it a point to make sure we either do a fundraiser somehow get back to the community with before we do these before we do these events right. you know i i know that we but when we first started doing the the fun not even fundraiser event but just giving away to the community we gave away 600 plates with all the trimmings 
you know, we gave about 600 away. We gave, what was it, goodie bags to everybody that was out there in the streets, you know, and we had people coming around saying how much for the plates, how much for the plates. It was just a, a matter of giving back to the community and feeling that involvement from the community when they start seeing, hey, y'all are from here go. too, you know, and I think that kind of sparked the drive, like, yo, this is a good feeling as well. It's not just about the music, you know, the impact that we can make was, it, it spoke louder than the music team. You know, the fact that we did it together spoke volumes. Because we had more than just regular people going. We had people from the courthouses, from the uh, the officers were pulling up, the laws they were showing up. Like, everybody wanted to know, like, who are these guys that are giving back like this and don't want nothing in return? Right. We didn't want nothing in return. We just want to show that there is people out there that care about what's going on in the city, in the world, period. <laughs> I think that's one of the beautiful things about hip hop is that we can all come from different backgrounds and some of our backgrounds might not be as squeaky clean as some other people's backgrounds and we can still make a difference because we can use the things we went through to help other people, man. And, and it's all y'all make great points about investing. That's a lesson everybody that's watching. You know, if, if you're scared to bet on yourself, then you don't need to be involved in this at, at all, man. Um, talk about real quick learning from mistakes because I know one thing about it. You know, having my own label, it's a lot of times you're gonna you're gonna slip and fall. You're gonna make some mistakes along the way. Bouncing back. Speak to the people about bouncing back. You don't have to say what mistakes got made, but just to instill in them that it's important to bounce back from any mistakes you make. The mistakes build character because if you don't never go through nothing, you'll never be able to endure something. Right. Like if you always win, if it's always easy, you when it's time for adversity, you won't know how to handle it. I mean, we gotta learn how to turn stumbling blocks into stepping stones at the same time I expect stumbling blocks. I personally think you need fear because it keeps you on your toes. It it kind of makes you brace yourself for the fall if it happens, but at the same time, overcome adversity. Right. But I mean, you're going to go through it regardless because no matter how many positive moves you try to make, there's always going to be people looking for the negative. And I mean, you have to expect that. Some people don't know how to deal with it. Some do, but it's going to come. But you need that, though. You just what, can't let what, it what, go. I think it's, go ahead. No, go ahead. I just think it's, a, I think it's important for you to surround yourself with the right people. Mm -hmm. You know, I think it's extremely important to surround yourself with the right people because they can help you in those situations, you know? Right. Um, I know that, you know, there's a lot. Look at, you know, Sin and Fatzilla, both doing bids. You know, that's that they they don't fail at that point. They took a loss at that time. Right. And look at them now, you know, going through advert. It's inspiring for anybody. They want to they want to listen to their story. Right. You know, so just that testimony alone, man, just I commend these guys for that. You know, it's extremely Absolutely. important to have people in your corner that, that are going to elevate you. Absolutely. What is the um the goal? What is the goal for off the chain records? What what do y'all see ourselves in three to five years? And what is the 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 plateau that you guys are working to reach? I, I think <laughs> it's more. That's that's hard. Right. <laughs> that's hard. You gotta, have, gonna... you gotta have that that force that that three to five year plan. I, when you get I know there, what our goal is. Yeah. I know what our goal is, man. Off the chain A1, man, it's, it's called expansion. We're gonna expand and we're gonna expand to bigger cities. Look, we already we already fuck with you. You know what I'm saying? It's a big step for all of us, regardless of how it happens. Like, uh, and our goal might not all be the same, but at the end of it, it's similar and that's what counts and that's what's making it work. That's what's making it shake for us and that's why we still, <laughs> Regardless of what we went through, look, look at me. I, I just got shot not even two weeks ago, four times in the chest, but I'm still good. You like, know, I'm gonna tell you something. I was there, <laughs> we were in the studio when you told me that. Yeah, yeah you stand there and I said, Yeah, man, I got shot a few days ago, four times. I said, What you mean, a few months ago? No, a few days ago. Both times in the chest, so man, yeah, you got some, um, you got some Superman action going on, and, 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 <laughs> but, but truthfully, you know, you know, God, God, God was with you, brother. You know, real so, you know, and, and use that, yeah. use that as a lesson to to say, 
what is it that I'm trying to be told by the creator to not only for this to happen to me, but to be still in full form and, and, and not having any issues. I'm here, baby. I'm on. I'm coming. Glad you are right. Do this. We got about five minutes, family. Um, give y'all social media information and anything that y'all got going on, anything that y'all got popping that's coming out. We can just go down the line, just drop your, your social media, Instagram, and all that. Let them know, my guys. My Instagram and Facebook is the real Sin Low. My Snapchat is Sin Low three six one. You know, Godzilla Mo, myself, Bug B. We got Pain. Godzilla got my five or six songs. Devastated. He got broken. They, he got uh. We have Pain. I dropped Mind Gone a couple of months ago. I haven't dropped the visual yet, though, but we got Mind Gone's out there. It's on all platforms. We missed the mic, Bub G. We just dropped In My City with Cribby Music. And then, you know, we're about to air the, the, the world broadcast premiere of, of Truth Is with the legendary K. Reno himself. <laughs> Jake, I know, and me, you know, thank you for blessing us. Bless us more perpetually. Like, you, hey, you couldn't have told you, me you, I was going to get out go of this. Uh, no. Like to uh, <laughs> offthechain.com if you want to find some apparel and clothes. We got that there too. <laughs> Do y'all have an off I just want to I just want to send us yes, sir. It's offthechain.com. Uh you can check out some of the new events we got coming on. Like like Vic said, you can go check out the merch on there. Uh we we working on new artist bios on the page. So if you guys want to get familiar with everybody that's on the off the chain page, there should be artist bios coming up here soon as well. There's some content on there that you guys can check out. Uh, I just want to say shout out to everybody that's involved, my whole off the chain crew, uh, uh, the whole A1 crew, Macadocious Money Management guys. I appreciate that. This would not be this would not be possible at all if it wasn't for anybody involved. You know, K Reno, we definitely appreciate you giving us the platform. Yeah. You know, just to kind of speak, and it's an honor to be you know, an honor to be around you. I appreciate you very much. What you got, Fazilla? Give him your give him your info, man. You can look me up on YouTube. I got about seven or eight videos you can watch. Uh, all of them heat, you can see when I started to now the progression in them, like, you know, just come come through. We we uh, really appreciate this, this little chance you're giving us. And we just want to thank you, man, because you know what? If we would have never met you, we wouldn't be in this position also. Uh, well, I, I'm of the belief that, you know, everything happened for a reason, but also if you got something in your heart that you're trying to accomplish, you know, y'all going to get there regardless if y'all would have met me or you, it never met me. You know, it's gonna, it would have happened in a, in a different kind of way, but, but, you know, we all got a long way to go and we all in this thing together. And you know, like so, you know, big eyes and little you, you know, you know, we, we were all in this thing together, man. Um, real quick before we go, um, the Corpus Christi scene. I, I, I definitely got a shout out to um, so some OGs, you know, my, my homie, little Fred and um, Clyde. Yeah. Because you know, I've been coming out that way since the 90s. You know, yes, I the club with, with Big Fred had a club out there back in, in the right. did a show out there in like 97. My first show <laughs> was in the Corpus was in 97. So, and, and my homie Jacob uh, doing promotion and all that. Corpus has always had a rich, a rich history, and I'm glad y'all mentioned Selena because I was going to mention it before you did. Um, every city has those icons that came out, um, and I'm just looking forward to seeing the day when y'all are, are in that same group, in that same type yeah, of uh, yeah. So it, it comes, it comes with work, and it comes with with belief, you know, in in the effort. Right. Man. So keep doing what y'all doing, man. Big homie, can I shout out a few people like that? Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. They, I ain't gonna lie to you, would not be possible without Big's wife Sandra, without Bubba's wife, yeah, both of my sisters, <laughs> Valerie Chavez, you know what I'm saying? Without Hustle Energy Films, my guy Mario, which shot all our videos. Yo, so shout out to the video crew. Yes, definitely, like for real, because it's, it's what you don't see on the camera. Yeah, it makes it happen because I ain't gonna lie, I don't be posting like that. I post stupid stuff. I'll be posting about the Cowboys and LeBron James and stuff. I, don't, <laughs> I ain't no social media guy. I'm like, for real, I got locked up phones like blocks. <laughs> Number <laughs> love, but you know, you do it, you do it your way, and people will gravitate towards that, man. So, once again, I thank y'all, man. 
And I'm um, looking forward to hearing from y'all in the future, man. Blessings to all of y'all, brother. Peace and love. Yes, sir. Bless you. Yes, sir. Blessings. Bless. Hey, Reno. <laughs> okay, Reno. Peace.